Hi, my name is Tim and in this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a website for your restaurant. Let's begin. With the method I'm going to show you, building your website is really easy and can be done in a few hours by anyone. Your website will also have a high conversion rate, so a lot of the visitors will make a reservation. But without further ado, let's just take a look at the website and what you will learn in this tutorial. So this is the homepage of our website. Here you are welcomed with a big image. If you scroll down, you can see some special dishes. Here we have another big picture. Then we have a link to our menu. Here we have a section where you can show the story of your restaurant and maybe something that stands out. So an about us section. If you scroll down further, here's a call to action to get in touch with you. So to book a table or to call you. Here's another about us section. And here we have a beautiful gallery that has some really great pictures inside of it. And another section where people can find you. Great, if we go up, you can also see that we built a menu. So here we have menu and contact. Let's just go to the menu page once. We could also open the button here. So I click on menu. And here we have a beautiful menu. These are three highlight dishes. And if we scroll down, it's separated into different areas. So we start with the breakfast menu. Here we show the product, for example, strawberry pancakes. There's a short description and the price. That's for all the products. Then there's the next section, which would be burgers. You can also click on the products. For example, if I click on hamburger, there's a dedicated page for our hamburger with more pictures, a longer description and maybe all the ingredients. If you scroll down further, there's also related dishes and another contact section. If we go back to the menu, you can build a separate page for each of your items. Then we have drinks and another contact us section. If we go to contact, here you can see visit us, a few sentences about the restaurant again, maybe your telephone number, your opening times. Here we have a map so people can find your restaurant easier and also a contact form where people can book a table online. That's also really great and not that hard to do. Okay, we can also go back to the homepage once. The page is also mobily optimized, so it looks great on every device. If we right click and look at it real quick, you can see it will look good on the tablet and also on your phone. So that's no problem. That's really important that this works. Awesome. And by the way, this is only a page for an American diner, but this is just an example. You can do, build and undo whatever you want. It's just your imagination. So you could build a site for your sushi restaurant, for your Italian restaurant, for your chicken restaurant. Whatever kind of restaurant you have, you can build a beautiful page for it. And it doesn't even have to look like this. There's tons of styles you can choose or build yourself. It's really easy. Let me get into the dashboard real quick and I can show you what the page builder looks like. Okay, so here I am in the editor and with this we can build our page. We're building the page with the software called WordPress. You've probably heard of it before. 30% of all websites on the internet are using WordPress and it's simply the best software available. Plus it's free, so that's pretty great. Um, yeah, this is the page builder. For example, if I want to change this text, I can just click in here, change it. I can make it bigger or smaller, change the color, whatever I want. I can also delete sections. I can build my own really quickly. I can do and undo whatever I want, change pictures. It's really, really simple. And in this tutorial, I also showed really slow because I wanted to make sure that everybody understands it. 
so if you just watch this video and follow my step-by-step -step tutorial, you'll be ready to build your beautiful and customized website for your restaurant today. It's not hard and I promise you that you can build a beautiful page for your restaurant by yourself. So let's not waste any more time and get into the tutorial. I start by explaining you some basics about WordPress and websites. When making a website, you basically have to do three steps. The first is to get a domain. A domain is basically the name of your website. For example, Facebook's domain is facebook.com, Google's domain is google.com, and my domain is timvisits.net. If we imagine your website as your house, the domain would be your address. It's where people can find your website. Domain names cost around $15 per year. The second thing we need is web hosting. You can imagine web hosting as a super fast computer with a really fast internet connection that's running 24 hours per day, 7 days per week, and it's storing all of your website's information and uploading it live to the internet. So your images, icons, texts, and whatever else you have on your website. Without web hosting, people could open your domain, but it would be a blank page. So to have a live site on the internet, you need web hosting. If we stay with the real estate metaphor, your website would be your house, your domain would be your address, and the hosting would be the property. Web hosting costs between five to $15 per month, but normally is also paid annually. And the third thing we need is WordPress. This is completely free and available from wordpress.org. Very important, do not mistake it for wordpress.com. WordPress.com is sort of a light version of wordpress.org that is much more limited in functionality. You also cannot follow most YouTube tutorials by using WordPress.com, so I personally would stick with WordPress.org. It's free anyway. Now, this may seem like a lot of stuff to start a website, but don't worry. In today's day and age, you don't have to get all of those separate and connect them. You can just go to most normal web hosting companies and there you get all three together. So you just buy the domain and hosting and can install WordPress pretty easily, at least in most hosting companies. So don't worry about that, we have that done in the next 5-10 to 10 minutes. We're just gonna continue and do these three steps. Let's go! Now you can decide which web hosting company you want to choose for your website. There are thousands of companies out there and I personally didn't try all of them. But a good pointer could be if you go to wordpress.org, which is the official WordPress site, and then go to hosting, they recommend some companies. In here you can see Bluehost, Dreamhost and SiteGround, at least right now, sometimes they change it. Um, I tried Bluehost and Dreamhost for a couple of months, but I personally wouldn't really recommend them. But SiteGround, I use those for like the last three years, I would say, yeah, about three years. And I have a grow big and a startup account with them and I'm really happy. So if you have no clue on what web hosting company to choose, maybe check out SiteGround. What I like the most about them is their 24-7 customer support. So if I ever had a problem, I just chatted them up and asked them the questions. And they helped me solve them in a couple of minutes. So that was always really helpful. Uh, what else? The servers are really fast. And I also never had any problems with hackers whatsoever. So yeah, I'm happy with them. Maybe check them out, maybe search for a SiteGround review online and see for yourself if it's something that might be interesting for you. Um, otherwise, you'll probably find another web hosting company or you may already have a web hosting company. Um, since I use SiteGround, I will also use them in this WordPress tutorial. But like I said, if you have another web hosting company, no problem, just figure out how to install WordPress on there and then you can follow this tutorial the same way as everyone else. Okay, so if you want to check out SiteGround, um, I will close that tab. I would really appreciate it if you can go to the very first link in the video description once and click on it, because that's my affiliate link. You can also see it here. That just means that I get a little commission from SiteGround in return for sending you. That's at no extra cost for you, and I also don't just do it for the money. 
Like I said, I've been a customer for the last three years and I think it's only right to recommend the web hosting companies I use for my own projects. So yeah, SiteGround is my recommendation and if you use the link, you can support free tutorials like that at no extra cost for you. So thank you for that. Okay, I close these tabs once and also this and this. And now we are on this page. SiteGround offers three different plans, the Startup, GrowBig and GoGeek plan. Normally, I would say the GoGeek plan is probably a little too much to start out with. Unless you want to start an e-commerce site or if you expect more than 100,000 visitors per month, you probably don't need the GoGeek plan for now. You can always upgrade later on, so I would normally stick with the Startup plan or GrowBig plan. The main two differences between the Startup and GrowBig plan are one, that you can only host one website on the Startup plan and on the GrowBig plan you can host unlimited websites. So if you already know that you're gonna make multiple websites, for example, yourdomain.com, yourrestaurant.com, yourbusiness.com, I would probably choose the GrowBig plan. The other difference is that the GrowBig plan has a little faster servers than the Startup plan. That's just because you have a little more disk space on the server and also because you get a little bit of technology to help make your site load faster. But it's not a really big difference. So the Startup plan is also really fast. It just kind of depends on what you want. I would say the main factor is that the GrowBig plan offers multiple pages and the Startup plan only one website. You can also here click on compare hosting plans to see like all the features right next to each other and see which ones are best for you. Or you can also go to help and chat with the support and they can help you out if you have any questions regarding your website or which hosting you should choose. In this case, I choose the startup plan because I just get it for this YouTube tutorial. For my personal projects, I have a GrowBig account and also one startup account because I want to have those separate. Um, but yeah, in this one, I choose startup, but for you, just choose whatever is right for your project. Cool. So I can go on choose plan here or also on get plan when I'm here. So I click on get plan. Then we land on this page. Here you can either register a new domain, so the name for your website, or you can also choose I already have a domain in case you already own your domain. For example, you have it stored on GoDaddy or whatever. Then you choose I already have a domain, type it in here and go to proceed. And in the top right corner of this video, I will link a video showing you how to connect your domain to SiteGround. You probably don't have a domain already, so I'll choose register a new domain. And here you can search for the domain you want. For example, I want to use let's create a website.com. Right now it's set to .de because I'm located in Germany, but you can always change the domain extension here on the right side. So just click on here. And I would probably stick with the most popular ones but you can also choose a country specific or a generic one. Let's try out.com. And I can probably guarantee you that this one is already taken. So I just click on proceed and try it out. And yeah, this one is taken. So in case your dream domain is taken, you can do a few things. You could change the extension, for example, .de is probably available. You could get a little creative. For example, I could add some minuses in here. Like, let's create a website. I could even add a number, for example, 24. Or what you could also do is go to your dream domain. So in my case, it would be let's create a website.com. And then just try to contact the admin of that domain and try to buy it off him. But that's a little harder. So probably just get a little creative and get a new domain. So I'll try out let's create a website.com. And that's available. Awesome. Okay, then we land here. Now they just need some information about you. So this is your account information with which you're gonna log into SiteGround later on. So your email, your password, and you have to confirm your password. 
then some client information, so your country, your first name, your last name, in case you have a company and want to buy hosting over that company, you can choose your company. And if you want also your VAT or tax ID, here you can type in your city, your street address, zip code and phone number. Maybe some of this will also change depending on where you're located. So just fill in what stands there. Then there's the payment information. So your card number, your card expiration, cardholder name and CVV code. In case you don't have a credit card, and you want to pay via PayPal, you can also go up and here under help, chat with the support and ask if you can pay via PayPal. They will then send you a link over which you can pay with PayPal and just proceed with that. I don't know why they don't show PayPal initially. I guess they don't like it as much, but you can also pay via PayPal. Okay. Uh, what else? Once you fill that in, you can also check the purchase information. So the plan is the startup plan in case you want to change it. You can also do it here. Data center. Mine is in Europe right now, but I could also say no. I want a data center in the UK, in the USA, or maybe in Singapore if I'm more located in Asia or somewhere around that. So just look which is right for you. In my case, it will probably be Europe. I would always choose the one that is closest to your customers, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Then the payment period. Right now it's set to 12 months. You could also choose a trial of one month, but I mean, you get a 30 day money back guarantee anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference if I choose 12 months and then cancel or if I choose a trial. I just stick to a year now, but you can just choose whatever you prefer. Okay. Then we also see the hosting price again and what well, else? Domain registration costs 14 euros, which is all right for a year. Domain privacy, we don't really need that. And the SG site scanner, we also don't really need that. I mean, if you want, you can always add that stuff, but it's not really necessary. So uh, yeah, then you can confirm the terms of service and privacy policy. And the total price for me right now is 73 euros. Once I add my VAT, so my tax ID, this will also go down. So it's only 61 euros, which in my opinion is completely fine. That's like about five euros per month for a website. So I'm happy with that. I can complain and then I can click on pay now. Now your account is being created. By the way, you will probably receive a couple of emails, at least one with your username and password and probably also want to verify your domain. So you can just open them and then do what they say. I click on proceed to customer area now. Awesome. This is the SiteGround dashboard. If you want, you can take a tour and look around, but we don't even really need that. All we need to do is go to websites here on the top. And here we have my website, which is let's create a website. We can then click on complete and skip and create empty site. For you, it's obviously your domain and not let's create a website. Okay. So skip and create empty site. And then we can click on finish. Great. Now we can click on manage site. Okay. Here we are. Just because we now created a site in SiteGround, it doesn't mean that we have a live website. It's just for the navigation in SiteGround. Basically, we still have to install WordPress and some other stuff. But by the way, what I wanted to show you first is if you ever have a question or any problem with the installation of WordPress, you can either comment down below and I'll help you out. Or you can also go on the question mark here, then go to view help center. Here you can click on contact us. Then choose, for example, advanced technical help. And let's say, for example, my site is too slow, which shouldn't happen. You can select it here. 
and then write whatever is your problem, click on post, or you can also chat with them after you clicked on post. Okay, cool. So this is how to contact the support. But if you ever have a question, also feel free to comment down below and I'll help you out. Good, okay. Let's get back into our website. So websites. And then here we can click on site tools. And we get back in here. Now we have to do two things. First, we have to install an SSL certificate. And then we can install WordPress. Now, why do I want you to install an SSL certificate first? This is for the safety of your website and also not to scare away any of your visitors. For example here, if I copy this link and paste it, you can see it says HTTPS. If we didn't have an SSL certificate, it would say HTTP without the S. And this lock here would probably be red and not say safe connection, but most likely that there's a problem and that it's not a safe connection. So without a safe connection, Google will also often block your visitors from coming onto your site. I put a screenshot in now what it will look like. So you don't want that. So that's why we are going to install an SSL certificate first. To do that, we can go on security here on the left side and SSL manager. And here we can see under Manage SSL that are already installed an SSL certificate. Sometimes they are automatically installed without me having to do anything. But if you go in here and under Manage SSL, you don't see your domain with Let's Encrypt. It means you don't have one. So then you can here choose your domain and on the right side choose Let's Encrypt and click on Get. You will then be in an installation queue, so this might take a couple of hours to really get installed, so just do it. Wait a few minutes, maybe a couple of hours, get back in here, refresh the site, and if you see that it says active down here, perfect, you can continue. Sometimes it might even take a couple of hours up to a day because your domain first has to get really registered. This isn't a fault of any hosting company or anything, this is just because they have to get to a register, get it registered, and then at first all has to be done. So don't worry, just wait up to a day if it doesn't work. Otherwise, you can also, like I showed you, go to the question mark and ask the support or ask me. Okay, so once you have an active SSL certificate, which is really important, I mentioned it once again, definitely get it before installing WordPress. You can go to HTTPS Enforce here on the left side and choose HTTPS Enforce. But only if you have an active SSL certificate. But also only do the step after you've done the previous step. Okay, since I've done this now, we can actually go on and install WordPress. So to do that, I can click on WordPress here on the left side and click on Install and Manage. Here I can choose WordPress, so I click on select. Then I can choose the domain I want to install it on. In my case, let's create a website.com. The installation path, we leave that empty. That's really important. If it doesn't allow you to leave it empty, contact the support. Okay, here on the language, you can choose in which language you want to have your WordPress dashboard. I'll choose English now, but you can also choose another one if you want. Okay. We don't need the WordPress data, so I'll uncheck that. Here you can choose a username. I would advise you to not use the username admin as the username because that's too easy to guess and might make your site a little unsafer. So choose something else. Then you gotta choose your password. I would also recommend to choose a very safe password because you're gonna choose your username and password later on to log into your website. Then you also got to select your admin email. We don't need the rest. I'll fill that out real quick and then I also click on install. So I click on install here. And now your site is installing. This may also take a couple of minutes. And by the way, here the same goes as for the SSL certificate. 
In case it doesn't work right away, it's probably because the domain first has to get registered. So wait a couple of hours and if it then doesn't work, contact the support or ask me in the comments. Okay, here we can now see it under Manage Installations. If you want to take a look at it, you can click on this icon here. And congratulations, now we are in the WordPress dashboard. We don't really need this page anymore, so we can close it. But if you ever want to get back in here, just go to SiteGround, log in with the admin information you set up earlier when buying hosting, and then go to the site like you saw in the tutorial. Okay, I'll close this now. And here we are in the WordPress dashboard. This is the place where we'll work on our website. If you ever want to get back in here, you can just open your domain slash WP minus admin and log in with the admin information you set up a few minutes ago. Okay, here we don't really need that stuff. It's all just a bunch of news. So we won't really work with that. It's just a small overview. In the top, you have your admin bar. We also won't need it as much mostly to take a look on our website. We can do that by hovering over here and then clicking on visit site. Awesome. This is probably what your website will look like now. Not really beautiful, but it looks kind of all right, but we're going to work on that too. So let's get back into the WordPress dashboard by hovering over here again and clicking on dashboard. We're mostly going to work with this navigation here on the left side. So here you have home, like I said, this is just about some updates and news. Then you have posts, you can edit those here, you can manage your media, you can add and create pages, you can manage comments, we can work on our appearance, so the look of our website. We can install plugins, we can manage users or our tools and also our settings. Don't worry, this may seem a little overwhelming right now, especially if you have never worked with WordPress before, but that's no problem. We're gonna go through all of this very slowly and very easily. I felt overwhelmed too the first time I opened it, but that's no problem. If you just follow this tutorial, you'll get it afterwards and have no problems navigating in here and also working on your site. So don't worry about that, just follow along. I will start now by doing some settings I do for every new website, so just follow them along. First I hover over settings and then I click on permalinks. And here I choose post name. Sometimes it's not automatically chosen, so that's why I double checked. So post name, save changes. Okay, then we go to users and your profile. And here under nickname, I choose Tim and display name publicly as Tim. I just don't want my admin name to be displayed publicly. Okay. And then we go to update profile. Now we can hover over settings and click on general. And here we have the site title and tagline. Right now the site title is my WordPress. You can also see it here. Or if I open the site, you will also see it up here in the tab. My WordPress, just another WordPress site. My WordPress, just another WordPress site. So here we can change the site title and tagline. For example, Tim Vessels, learn how to make a website. Great, uh, we don't need anything else. So I can then click on save changes. And if I refresh this page, you'll also see the title changed. Perfect. The next step, you can also see it here, is to create a home page. Right now, if I open my domain, which is letscreatewebsite.com, it just shows hello world. This is an example post. So right now, our website is in a blog format. But we want to have a home page on here. So if someone opens your domain, it will open your homepage. In order to do that, we go back into the dashboard 
And here on the left side, it says pages. Then I click on add new. I can click on X here and we just give it a title. Because it's my homepage, I will call it home. Don't even do anything else here, we don't need that. And then you have to click on publish in the top right once and once more. Awesome. Now we have a live page, but it's still not a home page. If I refresh the page, we still have the blog format. So what we have to do is go back into the dashboard, hover over settings and then click on reading. And in your homepage displays, we choose aesthetic page. And for the homepage, we select home and then save the changes. In case you don't have a single live site, you won't even see your homepage displays. So if you're wondering where you can see it, you first have to publish a page. And in case you want to have a page that is just for blog posts, you can choose it here too. You just have to create it first. Great, and if I refresh the page now, awesome, we have our homepage. Still doesn't look great, but that's what we're gonna work on now. Okay, so I go back in here and click on the dashboard once and can close this too. Let's open our page one more time. So we can hover over the name and open it in a new tab. And every website is built or split into three parts. You have your header, which is up here. This mostly contains your title and the navigation, which we don't have yet. Then you have your body, which is all this area. This just contains the information you want to convey. And you have your footer, which is down here. This mostly contains copyright information and also a navigation. In the past, I mean, you can still do it, but in the past, you normally built all this with your theme. So you went in here into the customizer, which you can find up here, and then edited all that, and you were dependent on what the theme offered you. We're gonna do it in a much simpler way now. And all we're editing with the theme itself is the header, so the navigation up here, and the rest, so the body and the footer will be built with Elementor. Elementor is a page builder and a plugin we just installed. You've probably also seen it in the introduction of this video. This plugin just makes it 10 times easier to build the pages you want. So our whole goal for the next step is to clean all that up and just leave the header. To do that, we can go back into the dashboard, hover over pages, click on all pages, and then click here on home. Because the home page is the page we want to edit. Okay. Once we're in here, we can scroll down and here you can see the Ocean WP settings. These are here because we just installed the plugin. You can see it here too. Uh, the plugin Ocean Extra. This is just an add-on for the Ocean WP theme. But you don't even have to think about that. Just make sure that you install the Ocean Extra plugin. Then you can see all that stuff down here. Normally, at least, I have to click on it once more. Okay, so here we have the Ocean WP settings. Under main, we have content layout, and here we choose 100% full width. And if I update the page once and refresh the page, you can see that this part is already gone. Great. We still have this title in here. We don't want that. So I can go to title here on the left side and disable it. Then I update it again and refresh the page. Awesome. Now the body is gone. We still have the footer. So I go to footer here on the left side and disable and disable, update and refresh the page. Awesome. This is also gone. All we've left that we don't want is above the normal header, there's like this small bar. Maybe you can't even see it. This is called a top bar, but it's also unnecessary. So we can go to header and here in display top bar, we disable the top bar and click on update, refresh the page and it's also gone. 
That's how we want it. Pretty blank, pretty boring, but that's perfect, because now we can start editing with Elementor. That's completely perfect. And by the way, you also don't need to update every single time and refresh the page. I just did it to show you what happens if you do it. You can just do all of these settings once, click on update and refresh the page and you'll see it. Cool. So this is done. And what we can do next is click on edit with Elementor. So you have it here, click on it. And this will open the Elementor page builder. And this is awesome. This makes making websites really easy. Even though it might seem a little overwhelming right now too, because there are a lot of settings you could do. But don't worry, I go through everything important with you step by step and you get everything by the end of this. Okay, let's start with the easiest part. Here on the right side, you can see a preview of everything that's going on on your page. And here on the left, you can do all the editing. If you want to take a closer look on your website and see how it really looks, you can also hide this panel to see it full screen and you can make it appear again. The great thing about Elementor is that there are thousands of settings you could do, but you don't need to know everything. I would say there are like maybe less than 15 things you really need to know about Elementor in order to be able to build everything you want to build. So let's start with the first one. How is a page in Elementor built up? In order to show you that, I would first import a page template. This is simply a pre-made page, which we can edit later on. We don't need to go in depth about the topic of templates right now. That will be important in maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but let's simply start and import a template. This way I can show you way easier how to use Elementor. So to import a template, let's open up the WordPress dashboard again. You can do that by opening our domain and then slash WP minus admin again. Or if you're still in Elementor, you can also click on this hamburger icon and then click on exit the dashboard. Great. Once we're in here, we're going to go to elements here on the left. You can see this because we installed the plugin Envato elements earlier on. If you go to plugins and install plugins, you can also see it here. If you don't see it, definitely install it because we need it now. So we go to elements and here you can just type in an email address. It doesn't even have to be a real one. Click on I agree and continue. Then here you can click on X and these are all template kits. But we don't even need to take a look at it now because we're going to go back to Elementor. That's all we had to do. So to go back to Elementor, you can go to pages or pages. And since we want to edit the home page, here we can simply click on edit with Elementor. For example, this privacy policy page was never edited with Elementor before. That way you can't do the shortcut. You would have to click on here first and then on edit with Elementor. But since we're working on the home page and we already work with Elementor there, we're just going to click on here. Great. Okay. Since we just activated the Envato Elements plugin, we can now see this icon here. So let's click on this first. And here we have the templates we just saw. The ones in the top with the star are in the Envato Premium version, which we would have to pay for, but that's unnecessary. So we can scroll down. And here in the bottom, wait, here it is. You can see the free versions. If we go to page two, we can even see way more. So these are all page template kits. So if I click, for example, on Solar Company, you can see we have a home page, a second home page, a third home page, an About Us page, services, single service, product landing page, a contact us page, and all that good stuff. If you want to take a look at them, you can just click on one of those and you see a preview. But let's choose a very simple one for this example. Let's say,
go to page number two and choose house cleaning company and then yeah let's choose house cleaning company and home run and just follow me here we will use other ones later on especially ones that fit our project but for now let's choose this one because it's a quite simple one so here you click on import template now it's importing great and then you can already click on x and refresh this page fonts great now you can click on this file and on my templates and here we see house cleaning company home one and click on insert yes Awesome, now we already have a ready to go website. This looks pretty cool, but that's not the point of it. The point is to show you how pages are built up. The first thing I noticed is that after importing a template, our header is gone. So we run that back. This sometimes happens. All you have to do then is go to the settings in the bottom left and under page layout, you can choose default and then wait a second it's loading in the meantime and here we can see the header again perfect let's click on the six buttons on here to get back to the widgets okay so how is a site in elementor built up if i move my mouse around here you can see there's a blue marking around this whole area this whole area is called a section. If we go down a little bit, we see it again. This whole area is a section. Here also, this is a section and this is a section and this is a section. So you can already see that each page in Elementor consists of multiple sections. Inside of these sections, you have columns. So here on the left, you can see it because of this gray area around it. So this is one column and this is the second column. In this section, we have four columns. Actually, you can see one here, one here, one here and one here. In this section, we have two columns again. So one here and one here. In this section, we have one and two. Even though this might be empty, it's still a column. So what we can see is that each section has one or multiple columns in them. And if we go into each column, you can see there are widgets in there. So here you can see we have this button. This is surrounded by blue marking again. We have this text, which is also surrounded by this blue marking. And this title is also surrounded by this blue marking. The same goes for this. We have a title and in here we have an icon with the text also surrounded by a blue marking and also surrounded by a blue marking. These are called widgets. You can find widgets here on the left side. For example, images, videos, buttons, spacers, Google Maps, icons, image boxes, image carousels, so there's a bunch of stuff you can add in here. For example, I want to have a video between the title and the text. So I could just choose the video widget, click it and drag it between this, drop it and in here we already have a video. So now we have this widget and this widget and this widget and this widget inside of this column inside of this section. So in total, we have a bunch of widgets inside of columns, inside of sections. This just helps to split up the pages and to work on them. This was already the first lesson and probably one of the most important ones. Let me click on this again to get back to the widgets. Okay. The second lesson is how to edit text. Everything here on the right side can be edited. So let's start with this title. This is a simple text. If I click on this or if I click on edit heading, 
or if I right click and then click on edit heading, I can edit it here on the left side. So you have these three options. Click on it, click on this pencil or right click and then click on edit. Okay, once you're in here, you can edit everything. Let's start with the content. In the title, you can just change whatever it says. For example, how to make a website. And now it already changed the text. We can also add a link. So whenever someone clicks on this title, it will lead to the link we put in here. We can also change the alignment. So right now it's set to left. We can align it in the middle or on the right. Let's put it to the left again. And that's basically all we can do in the text under content. We can also edit the style and advanced settings. Let's go to style, which is just the look of this. So for text color, we could change the text color to anything we want in here. For example, a red tone or a green tone, or we can also change the bar down here to find the right tone we want. For example, this bluish one, we can make it more transparent by dragging this bar to the left. We could also clear it, but I'm just going to choose right again. So I click on right and it's right again. If you want to close that, just click on this square again. Okay. Then we can also go into the typography, which is just the font. So to edit that, we can click on this pencil. Here we can change the font family. You can choose out of hundreds of fonts. Let's just choose this one, for example, or another one. For example, this, you can change the size of the font to make it really big or really small, whatever you like. Let's say this size is okay. You can change the rate to make it more bold or less bold. For example, now it's set to 900 and it's quite bold. You can make it 100. So now the letters are really slim. Set it to bold, whatever you like. You can also transform it. Right now it's capitalized. You can make it uppercase, lowercase, or normal. I would choose capitalized for now. Good. The rest isn't as important. You can change the line height to make more space between the lines. Or also the letter spacing to have some more spacing between the letters. Okay, if you're happy with that, you can also click on the pencil again to make it smaller. And that's actually all we really need to know about editing text. If you want, you can even edit the text shadow. So if I move it a little to the right by changing horizontal, you can probably see it here. You have a little text shadow. So you can just play with it a little bit to see what looks better. You can also make it a stronger color, so less transparent maybe. So now it's really black. Let's choose a lighter one again. Okay, yeah, that should look all right. This just helps to pop out, for example, this right with the right background. Okay. If we want to close that again, just click on the pencil one more time. Good. Yeah, we could do the same for this, for example. So I can right click and add a text or just click in here. Then I can change the whole text. This time in content, we don't even have a link or anything. This is simply text. So as you can already see, sometimes the content changes a little bit, but you can just see what you can change in here and then work on that. In this case, just the text. Here you can work on it a little bit like in Word or Google Docs. So you can link certain stuff, you can make a bullet list or a numbered list. You can make stuff bold, italic or underline it. But most of the styling will also be done in the style here. Okay, cool. So I could also align it differently again. Okay, let me click on here again to get back to the widgets. And that's already all you need to know about editing text. The next thing we can learn about are buttons. You can see one button here, for example. It's the same thing as for our text. If I want to edit it, you can just click on it. And here we have all these settings. Let's get into the content first. So I click on content. I can change the text to learn more.
And for the link, which is probably the most important part about buttons, because you want someone to click on it and then land on another page, here you can link to different pages. For example, if you want to link it to youtube.com, you could copy YouTube's URL. So if I go back once, you can see here in that format and just paste the URL in there. What you can also do is link to other pages of your website. For example, right now I only have one live site, which is the home page. But if I search for home, you will see I can just select the home page and if someone clicks on it now, it will land on the home page again. Later on, when we have more pages, I will also show you different stuff you can add in there. For example, it could lead to our contact page. Okay, let's just leave it like that. The alignment is the same as for the text. The size, we can change it to extra small or make it extra large, whatever you want. Let's choose medium, for example. You can add an icon if you click on here. Let's say I want to have an angle down or a double angle down. So I choose this and click on insert. And now we have it here behind learn more. The icon position right now is set to after. We can also change it to before. And now we have the angle down before the words. We can also make some more spacing between it. And yeah, that's all in the content. We can also go into style and work on the style of our button. So typography is the same as for text. You can change the font, the size and all that stuff. And also text shadow is the same. So I'm just going to skip that now. Here we can work on the colors. So right now the background color is set to this green tone and the text color is this right. So let's change the background color, for example, to yeah, this blue. Click on it again and the text color to maybe black. We can also make it more transparent again, all that stuff. Click on the square again to make it smaller. We also have a border. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's like a small green border around it. So we could also change that color by clicking on border type and then color and then making it this blue again too. Or we could also just select that we don't even want to have a border and then that would be gone or we leave it. For example, at solid, we could even make it bigger. So three, right now you don't really see it, but if you hover over the button, you can see that the colors change and then you can really see the border around it. And if I make it smaller again, it also gets smaller. So that's kind of what you can do with the border. So right now it's unnecessary, but if you hover over it and have that effect, it's helpful to have a border. We can also work on the border radius. I'm just going to do it to one. Okay, so the border radius is how round this button is. Right now it's set to 35. If I change it to zero, it's going to be square and have sharp edges. If I put it to 90, it's really round. So let's just leave it at 35 for example. Okay, what else do we have? In here we have padding. This is how much space you have on the inner side of the button. So if I make it, let's say 30, we have way more space to the top, left and right, inside. So from the words to the edge, there's going to be more space. If I make it 100, it's really big. If I make it zero, it's the minimum. Okay, let's set it to 20 for example. What you can also do is just change the padding for certain parts. So right now it's linked together. You can see it here. So when I change it from 20 to 50, everything changes. The top, right, bottom and left. If I unlink it, I could say the top should have 29, the right should have 70, the bottom should have 16. So I can change each of those individually. It doesn't really look too good in this case, 
but it's also an option. Okay, I just set it back and let's say, oh. and let's say 25. Yeah, that should be all right. Cool. What else can we change in this style? Up here, you can see normal and hover. If I hover over the button, as you also saw before, it changes the colors. That's because here in the normal, we have blue and black selected, which you can see. But if I go to hover, you can see text color is white, background color is kind of transparent, and the border color is also white, which you can see around here. We can also work on that and just change it. For example, the background color should be an orange tone. So I choose orange here and, and drag the transparency over. And let's choose a good color, maybe something like that. And now we have an orange background. That's cool. We could also do the same for the text color. So right now we're on the background color. I just click on the square again and text color, click on this and let's say black, for example. So I can just choose the black up here or I could also choose one that's here. Click on the box again. And then if I hover over it, we have this button color. Looks quite cool. Okay, well, that's, we could add in hover animation. So if I click on this and choose pulse, for example, if I hover over the button, it moves around. You can choose any of those or also choose none, whatever you like. Let's just click on this X here and have none. Okay. Yeah. That's basically all there is to buttons right now. You don't really need more. You've seen all that stuff. And we could do the exact same thing for every single button in here. We have edited this and we can also go down. Here we have a button and here we have a button. And here we also have another button. So we can just edit those if we want to. Awesome. That was lesson number three, how to edit buttons. So that's also done. The next thing we're going to learn is how to undo things. Sometimes you may did some changes and you don't like them when looking at them afterwards and you may want to undo those. That's really easy in Elementor. All you have to do is click on Ctrl Z on your Windows computer or if you use Mac, it's Command Z. Let me do that a couple of times and you will see that it changes. Here, with every time I do it, I go back a step. Another way to do it is if you go to this icon down here, which says history, you can click on it. And here you see all the changes you made in the last 24 hours. So you can really go down here. And for example, I want to go back to the part where I started editing. So I could just choose this and all the changes are gone. I edited the video in here earlier than that. Okay. But what if you want to do changes that were further down the road than last 24 hours? That's also very easy. Every time you click on update, it saves a version of your website, which is then in return also the live version of the website. So if I refresh the page, okay, nothing really will change because <laughs> I didn't refresh it since then. But if I go up here, what also happens is if you go to revisions, here you see all the versions you saved. So I could also go back to the version of 16 hours ago, for example, or even a month or two. It saves all the versions and you can go back in time as much as you want. This, for example, was even another template. Okay, let me go back to this version. And that's how you can go back in time. Okay, I think this was the fifth lesson. Yeah, it should have been. Okay, so the next lesson is how to change images and how to work on them. We have two types of images. We have background images. For example, here we have a background image and we have normal images. For example, this is a normal image. This is a background image and this is a normal image. 
Let's start by editing normal images. For example, I want to replace this image. How do we do that? That's quite simple. It's like every other widget. You just click on the widget or on the pencil. And here in content, you can change the content. So here I can click on choose image, or I could also just delete it. Then we don't have an image anymore. And then let me click on choose image. And here you could upload files from your computer. We'll also do that later on. But right now I'm just going to choose some of my media. So I go to media library, and these are all the images that are already uploaded to your WordPress media. So in case you imported a few templates, you will have a bunch of images already. Let's say I want to use this image now. So I can just click on it. And if I'm happy with it, I can click on insert media. Now it's inserting and it's in there. Perfect. Here we can also set the width and the height. Right now they are all set to 800 times 600. So they all fit perfectly. You can change the alignment, but that doesn't really make a difference because it's just a small column. You could even give it a link or a caption. And we can also go into the style of it and change the width and the height, which isn't really necessary now because we already set it in here. But I mean, we could also make it smaller if we wanted to, even though it doesn't really make sense right now. Okay, we can also give it more opacity or less opacity, which is quite an interesting one. Also for hover, maybe we want less opacity than hovering. So let's say it's like that. <laughs> okay, but I give it 100% opacity again, if it wants to. Okay, perfect. We can also, if I go back to normal and not on hover, give it CSS filters to modify the image a little bit. So if I click on the pencil, I can blur it or unblur it. I can make it more bright or less bright. I can work on the contrast, even though that's actually not that good with <laughs> such a bright picture. I can work on the saturation, and on the U. Okay. Okay, so that's all we can do in the CSS filters. I rarely use them because I like the pictures like they are. But yeah, that's basically what you can do. We can also work on the border radius again and round the image a little bit if you want. But you've seen that all before in the other sections I already showed you. This is just a reminder. Okay, so that's all you need for normal images. They are quite easy. Let me get back into the widgets. And now let's edit a background image. Let's say we want to exchange the background image in here. It's quite similar, but still different. This time it's not a widget, but it's a background. It's the background of a section because it goes all around the section. So what we have to do is edit the section and not a widget this time. To do that, just hover above it and then you can click on these six dots where it says edit section. Or you could also just hover over somewhere where it's not a column or a widget, for example here. Right click and then click on edit section. It's basically the same. I'm going to click on edit section now. And here I can edit the whole section. Let's just go into style because this is where we can find the background image. And here on the background, you can find the image. This is now just set to normal and background type is set as classic. You can also choose different ones. We will see those later on, but let's just stay with the classic and here on the color, we could even just say, okay, I want a colored background. Let's say for example, red. And if I delete this image, we will just have a red background, which can also be quite interesting. For example, here we have a right background, but I don't want a red background. So I'm going to click on here and clear it. So it's transparent now. Click on the color again. So on here. 
And now I can choose an image as the background. So I can just, as in the images before, click on choose image and choose an image for my background. Let's say I want to use this one maybe, no, it's maybe a little more. Yeah, this one should be all right. I'm just going to choose one from my media, but you can also, like earlier, just select a file from your computer. So media, and I choose this and insert media. Like this, insert media. Great, now we have a background and we can still do some stuff with it because this looks worse than before. There are a few things we can do. First, we can change the position of the image. For example, right now the door is like kinda in the middle of it. We could change the position by going to position here and making it, for example, center left or top center, bottom center, custom, and then say the X position should be here and the Y position should be there. This all depends on what you want to show on your website. You can also minimize the editing so you can see what it would really look like. And yeah, maybe I like it with the American flag in the middle. Could look cool. Okay. Let's just say I leave it at the custom position. There's one more problem. And that is that you can barely see the right titles. So what we can do now is go to background overlay, which is down here, open that up and add a background overlay. So here under color, we can choose, for example, black. Make it less, uh, make it a little more transparent. So now the image gets darker because we add a background overlay. This is simply like a grayish color that's overlaid over the background picture. So this way the title can stand out a little more. Say like that. You could even choose red or whatever you want. This all depends on what you want and what kind of colors you use for your website. But this is just an example right now. Yeah, let's do it like that. You can see the titles. Okay, so I can click on the color again. Even change the opacity here. So now it's getting darker. Or now you can't even see it. Like that. Should be alright. Okay. We can even go back into the background again. If you click on here. And what else? The attachment right now is set to default. You can even choose scroll. This is quite cool. So if we choose scroll. And now if I scroll down. It's saved. But if I choose... No, not in the position, sorry. Um, but here in the attachment, if I, if I then choose fixed, the picture is fixed, but the rest scrolls. So this way, we have like this effect, which I really like. Kind of seems like going down an elevator. <laughs> it's quite cool. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. And yeah, the other important thing is the size. Right now it's set to cover. So this way it covers the whole area. Especially if you have smaller pictures, it's important that you work with the size so that it contains the whole area. So here you should choose cover. You could also choose contain or custom again. This all kind of depends on what you want to show. For example, here I chose auto and now the image starts again. It's here and here it starts again. So we don't want that. For the size, I would simply choose cover. That's the best option you can use. Okay. You can even fill in a background video by choosing video and typing in the URL here. Then you have a background video, but we're not gonna do it now, maybe later on. Okay. I'm going to click on the widgets again, and that's all there is to the background images and to images. Great. This was lesson number six. By now we've learned a lot of stuff. You know how to edit buttons, texts, how to edit images and also background images, titles, add in videos and how all the columns work. But what if you want to rearrange some stuff on your website? For example, you don't want the section to be up here but lower down. 
What you can simply do is move your mouse above the edit section icon, click it and drag it down and wherever it appears blue, you can drop it. And now it's lower. You could also do it a little more, for example, down here. And this also works with other sections. For example, this one could also be down here if we wanted to. The same principle goes for columns. For example, here we have a left column and here we have a right column. If I want to change that, I can just click here on the add a column icon, drag it to the left, for example, and drop it. And now it's switched. You can also undo that. And the same thing also works for widgets. So the things inside of the columns. For example, I want to have this button on the right. So I can just click on the edit button icon, drag it to the right and drop it. Awesome. It's that easy. So that's how you can rearrange some stuff on your website. But let's say I don't just want to rearrange it, but maybe I don't even want to have this whole section. What you can then do is just click on the X here and it will delete. The same thing goes for widgets. I can right click and then click on delete. I can also do that for columns. So right click and delete. Now we only have one column left. And I could also delete the whole section like that. If I'm ever unsure about it and maybe I want to undo it, you already learned, you can click CTRL or Command Z. Just like that, we go back. Great, and now we are back in the normal settings. That's almost all the basics you need to know. There's only one last thing, which would be adding in your own sections and widgets and columns. To do that, you can just scroll down and down here you can see this pink plus. Just click on it once and then you can select your structure. So how many columns you want. You can either have one, two, three, four, or all of these different ones. Let's just choose one. Okay, now we have one column and one section in here, but still no widgets. Let's start by giving this section a little more space. To edit the section, just make sure to click on edit section once and here on the left, we can edit it. If we go to advanced here, you see margin and padding. The margin is the space on the outside. So if I would add, 100 on the top and bottom, we have 100 pixels of space between this section and this section. You could also unlink this and give it, for example, 200 to the top. Now we have more space to the top and still 100 to the bottom. Or you can also make it zero and use padding. Padding is the spacing on the inside. So how much space you have on the inside of this section. For example, if we give it 100 on the top. No, wait, let's go back first. Let's unlink that first and give it 100 at the top and 100 at the bottom. So now we have a little more space to the top and bottom. We don't need one on the right and left. So that's where I unlinked it and only chose top and bottom. So now we have some more space in here. Okay, now let's go to the layout and we can also click back on the widgets by clicking on here. Okay, and now let's add some widgets. For example, first we want a title. So I can just choose a title and drag it in here and then I can drop it. And now we have our title. This just works like I showed you in the beginning. You can click on it and then you can edit the content style and advance. So that's titled Hello World. We could give it a link, center it if we wanted to. Let's leave it on the left. Then I can go into style, typography, make it bigger, go back on typography, text color. Let's say I want a grayish color like that maybe go back to the color okay now i have a title i go back to the widgets 
And I want an image below it. So I can choose an image here on the left and drag it down there. Here I could choose an image from my media library, for example, this and insert the media. Now I have this image, maybe it's too big. So I could choose medium. Oh, I don't really like that. Line it to the left. Yeah, looks all right. Okay, we could also go into this style and give it some custom sizing or change the opacity. But let's just leave it like that. We can even add a border to round it. Okay, what well, else do I want? Maybe I want to have Google Maps below it. That's also quite cool and quite useful sometimes. So I can just choose Google Maps. And here I can type in the location, for example, New York City. And it already chose New York City. We can change the height of the map. So how big it is, let's make it a little bigger maybe. And also the zoom, so how far it is zoomed in. Awesome. Okay, we could go back to the widgets and do everything we want. We could even add a background image. So we would have to click on edit section, style, and then background, and then background type classic, and upload an image, as you saw before. For example, this donut. This already looks quite cool. It's not perfect, but just to show you how you can add your own sections, columns, and play with the widgets. And now I can congratulate you. These are all the important basics about Elementor. You will learn some more in the course of this video, but if you understood everything I showed you in the last, I'm not sure, 20 minutes, you will be good to go and ready to build your sites and customize everything you want. So congratulations, you just learned a very valuable skill that you now just need to practice a little more. So that's what we're gonna do now by building a hands-on example for your project. Let's begin. The first step would be to clean up the site because we don't need any of this stuff. So what we can do is just click on the X for all the sections once and delete everything. Great. And now we can save all our changes by clicking on update once. And if I refresh the page, we have a blank page again and can start from scratch. Awesome. Let me get back in here. In this example, I'm going to build a website for an American diner, but you could use it for any kind of restaurant website you want to build. So if you have a Mexican restaurant, Italian restaurant, Greek restaurant, sushi restaurant, whatever. You can build your own website with this. In the last step, you've seen me building my own section and building everything from scratch. In theory, we could also build a whole website from scratch. So I would have to start by clicking here on the plus and then adding my first section and working with the widgets. But I would definitely not recommend you to build your whole site by your own because even though it's quite easy to build your own sections, it will, especially as a beginner, never look really professional. That's the kind of sad truth. So what I would recommend is to just work with pre-made templates and pre-made layouts. I'm going to show you now. They are made by professional designers. You can use them for free and just customize them in a way that no one will notice that they are pre-made layouts. It will look 10 times better and save you a lot of time. So I would definitely recommend to use templates. To do that, we can just click on the green and Vato elements icon here. In case you don't see it, you have to make sure that you installed Envato elements, the plugin and activated it. Then go to elements, put in your email address, agree to the terms and sign up. And then you can use the elements. Okay. So when we're in here, click on the icon and you can see templates and blocks. Templates are whole site layouts and blocks are just parts of websites. For example, hero parts, which would be the top part with a big image and maybe a button. 
or for example pricing menu. Let's start by adding in a good template for a whole site. So we can go to templates and here in the top we can search for restaurant. Or we can also go to food and drink which is a category here. Here the top ones with the stars are premium ones but you can use all those down here. You can see for example this one is for sushi, this one is a catering business, a bakery, a coffee shop, a barbecue restaurant. Maybe there's one you really like. For example if I have an Italian restaurant maybe I can click on here and take a look at some of the pages. You can also see a preview of them if you just click on one of those and then you can scroll through it. You also don't necessarily need to choose one that directly fits. Let's say you have a sushi restaurant, but you don't like the sushi template here. You can also choose the bakery template and use it for your sushi restaurant. That's no problem at all. If you want, just go through it and see what kind of layout you like, what kind of pages you want to use. You could also combine them for example, you could use the homepage of Mexican Restaurant 1 and the About Us page of Restaurant or Cafe. There are a lot of options. I'm going to work with some in here from the Italian restaurant actually, even though I'm going to build an American Diner website. Let's just start by building a homepage. Maybe you can use that template too. I'm an Italian restaurant and I'm going to choose Home 2. But if you don't want to use it, just use another one. You have all the skills to customize it yourself. I'm just showing you one more hands-on example with the restaurant page here. So, home to. Yeah, I like that. Then I can click on import template. Now it's importing. Great. Now it's imported, so I can click on the X and refresh my page once. And now I can click on the file icon, go to my templates here on the right, and import the Italian restaurant home to. So I can click on insert, and yes. And it's in here, great. The only problem is again that the header is gone because it was overwritten. So in case that also happens to you, just click on the settings in the bottom left and then click on page layout and choose default. Then it will come back. Awesome, we have our header back and now I can go to the widgets and start customizing the site for my imaginary American diner. The most important part about every restaurant website is having great pictures. If you can, maybe you have a friend that's great with photography or maybe you just know someone and it would be really helpful, I would say, if they can take some great photos of your menus, of your food, of your restaurant itself, maybe of some employees or of the chefs, because pictures are what makes the website really great. So I would definitely recommend that, but in case you don't know anybody, just take a smartphone with a good camera, each newer iPhone should be good enough, and take some nice pictures. They just have to look appealing and friendly, that would definitely help in getting new customers. Okay, I'm going to update the page just once to make sure that it's saved. Okay, let's start by changing the image here in the top of this header area. So, to do that, this is a section, I click on edit section, then I go to style and this image should be exchanged. So I click on here and now I can upload files. So I go on upload files, select files and select my picture. These are some stock images I took from the internet, but like I said, I would definitely try to get good pictures of your restaurant. Okay, for my hero area, which is the top area we're working on right now, I want this to be my background image. So I just select that, click on open. Now it's uploading. And by the way, it's also really important that you compress your images. So when you upload it, you will see here on the right, 
This one for example says 224 kilobytes, which is alright. It's a big picture and about 200 kilobytes is alright. But definitely make sure that you don't use pictures that have like one megabyte. And because of the long loading times, some customers may go off your site, which is not good. So in case your pictures are really big, you will see it here. Just search for compress tool. I'll also put in the name here, like a search for an online compressing tool. There you can just upload the picture, compress it so it's a smaller size and then upload it again. Okay, so here we have that picture and then I can just click on insert media and it's in here. The position is now center left and the attachment is fixed. So if I scroll, like moves up, I can now go into the layout and make it a little bigger. So if I go to height here, it says minimum height and it's set to 700. That's why it's only 700 pixels high. Also make it bigger. Or what I can do is choose fit to screen and now it takes up the whole space. But I think I might actually go back to minimum height and choose 700. Okay, that's already kind of the header section, but I don't like that the text is above the burger. Here on the left side, I have lots of space. So let's change that. To do that, just click on welcome to. And the alignment right now is set to right. Let's change it to left. The same for the restaurant, left. And we can even change the text. Welcome to, and this is Ernest Steiner. I could also go into the style and if I wanted to, I could change the font. Maybe you have a font you want or make it bigger or smaller. Let's make it like that maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, I already like this hero section. This is like the top section. And now we can continue with the second section, which are our special offers. Let's start here by also changing the background image. This time it's not the background of the whole section, but it's the background of this column. So if I click on add a column and style, you will see it has a background image. So I can click on here, go to upload files, select files and choose the image. This time I want to choose this one. So I just click on it, open it. Also make sure that it's not too big a size. I can only remind you, that's really important, but this one also only has 240 kilobytes. And then I click on insert media. Okay, and now you can see it doesn't directly fit anymore because the template was made for another picture, but I can just change the position. Then let's choose custom. Okay, so X position should be in the middle like that and y position maybe a little higher and y position is gonna be zero yeah that looks good awesome then we can click all of this column again because i already like the background picture and now i can change our special offers because we as American diner don't serve light pizza or a royal fish. So here you could maybe show some of your special offers. So I can click on this one, change the image. I go to upload files, select files. And this time I want to showcase, yeah, maybe my beef sandwich. So I open that. It's uploading and insert the media. Maybe when you want to showcase some of your food, you want to cut it out so that there's no background or if there is background, always keep the same one. So maybe like a neutral right background or some kind of desk that it always stands on on the same position, just so each of your meals always looks the same. In case you want to cut out your plates, you can also go to Fiverr.com. This is a platform where you can find freelancers that will do some gigs for you 
for example, here I could search for cutout. And here you can, for example, see I will do 100 photos, background removal, cutout, resize image, and the logos for four euros and 79 cents. So maybe you could even take pictures of 100 of your specialties, send them to him, he will cut out the backgrounds, and then you can have pictures like that. It shouldn't be that hard. Oh yeah, and I will also show you a tutorial on how to use Fiverr later on. This will be, I think, in the second link in the video description. So in case you want to learn how to use Fiverr, check that out. Okay, so now I added this one. I can also change the text because it's an image box widget. So it's a widget that has an image and a title and a description below it. I already prepared some text to save some time. So I just copy them and paste them in. This is just some nonsense, but just to save some time. You can also edit this one, click on here, upload files, select the file. And this time, for example, here, this cutout burger. Insert the media. I can change the text again. So this is my tomato burger. <laughs> so fresh sandwich. And I can also copy the text. Like I said, it's really important to have great pictures. That would make a huge difference. The last one will be a burrito. So upload files, select files. And it will be our cutout burrito. So. Insert the media and copy, paste, and the same for the description. Awesome. I think this might already be a good place to already link our full menu. So to do that, we can add a button. So I just go to buttons. Choose one and drag it below here. Scroll down, okay. Text, full menu. In case we already had a menu page, I would just type in menu now, but I don't have a menu page yet. So what I can do is type in forward slash. And since I already know that I'm going to call my menu page menu, I will just choose menu. And then later on, it will also link to menu. Okay, I want it to be centered and I want it to be large. Okay, I also want it to have an icon, so I click on icon and I choose spoon. Yeah, that should be good. Insert and I want it uh, before. Yeah, before is good. Give it some more spacing. Great. Now I could also go into the style and change the colors. So the text color can stay white. Background color, let's give it good red to stand out more. And that's good. Let's go to hover. Right now it has no hover color. Let's change the background color to white. And the text color should be the same red. So I click on the red, copy the hex code, go to hover, text color, and paste it in. And if I now hover over it, this happens. That's cool. Let's also give it a small animation. Maybe a, what is a push? No, that's too much. Pop is too fast. <laughs> what is a rotate? Yeah, maybe a rotate. That looks good. Okay, nice. Let's take a look at it in the full screen mode, the kind of full screen mode. Okay, now that doesn't look too good yet because the edge isn't really looking good. Let's try to work on that again. So I click on add a column. 
Okay, let's see. Maybe the X position is a little too far. Maybe like that. Let's see again. Yeah, that looks way cleaner. Okay, so now we already have the zero and all special of us. I think that looks nice. Great. And already looks a lot different than the Italian page we had before. Okay, so the next part is about our restaurant. So I'm going to go in here again. As before, we can change the background image. I'm gonna do that real quick. You've seen it before, so style, image, upload files, select files, choose a good image. Maybe this, open. Insert media. Yeah, that should look good. Let's change the color here by clicking on this, the style, and I think it should be background overlay. No, it's not background overlay. So you can see, I also have to look what it is, but you can just go through the settings and you will see and find what it is. So if I go to background, maybe it's the background type. No, it's not that. Maybe it's in the column actually. Let's go to style. Yeah, yeah, we have a background color, which is this brownish. Let's choose like a bright red. Maybe something like that, yeah. That can look really cool. Let's copy the text code, click on the color again. Let's look in the background overlay real quick to see if there is anything, because here on the right you can still see like this brownish thing on the you can still see this brownish overlay over the burger. So we would have to take a look here. Maybe it's in the column on the right side too. Let's take a look. Background overlay. Is it have, yeah, here it is. It's like this brownish again. So paste that in and now it's red. Perfect. So you can see I also have to look. Okay. So about a restaurant, I already made a text. This is great to have like a few sentences about your restaurant. It's probably like a family restaurant. So make a cool description. You probably already have one. I just created a fictional story here. Okay. I mean, you can also change the title and do something completely different. Maybe you don't even want that section and you can delete it. That's all just what you want. Maybe you even have a different template. Let's go in here. So. This is also an icon box. This is kind of like an image box, but with an icon. So quality food, original recipes, fastest delivery. You can probably leave it in case you don't even deliver. You can also delete it. Okay, so we have quality food and original recipes. Let me copy the text I want to change here. Here, quality food. Paste that in and original recipes. Click in here and change that too. As you can see, it's quite easy. You can also change the text here or delete it. And here you can now see they have a background video. It's cool, but you probably don't have a video of your restaurant. So I'm not sure if you want to build that in. Maybe you can even find like a video online then definitely use it because it's a very cool feature that not a lot of websites use and looks really professional. In order to edit that, just click on edit section, then go to style. And here in the background, in, under background type, it set a video and they pasted in a YouTube link. So this is the YouTube video playing in the background. If you find a YouTube video or maybe also have a Vimeo link, you can just paste it in and have a background video. And in case the video does not load or in case someone opens the website on their smartphone, you can choose a background fallback here. So a background image. This will load when the video can't load or the user opens it on a mobile phone. Yeah, here you can choose the start time so it should start 10 seconds into the video and maybe end 70 seconds into the video and then it just repeats. 
You can choose if it should play on mobile or not. I would probably choose no, because sometimes the mobile data may be a little too slow. But like I said, maybe a background video is a little too much, especially if you don't have one of your own restaurant. So let's delete that and instead use a background image. To do that, we can click on classic again, click on image, upload a file, select the file. And in this case, I'm going to choose maybe a background menu. And insert the media again. Make sure that it's well positioned. But let's first go into the layout actually and make the height a little higher. Maybe, yeah, like that, should be good. Then I go back to the style and see if I want to position it differently. Right now it's set to default. Maybe I want center right, center center, whatever you want to show. You could also choose contain, then it's almost the whole image, but it will also repeat. So this right part is here on the left because the whole image doesn't fit in there. We don't really want that, so I would choose default probably. Yeah, that looks good. You just have to play around with it a little bit because you're just customizing it for you. Here, the get in touch button, we can edit. We can also edit the text. I mean, we can edit everything, but let's just edit here the text. So maybe we have different times than them. Just write it here. You can also work on the style and also work on the button. So let's click on the button, link, get in touch. So it will link to our contact page. So I will type in forward slash and then contact. Great, okay. Then we can click on update. And we also have that section done. But you know what? Uh, let's change the color of this button because it's red, this is red, and this is red, so it doesn't really stand out. But you want your customers to click on that button because this is where they call you or where they book a table, so this is where you make money. To stand out a little more, we can just change the color by going to the Style tab and changing the background color maybe to a nice blue. And maybe we can also round it a little bit. Yeah, I guess that stands out a little more. Cool. Okay, what else do we have? Let's go to the next section. Okay, our team of professionals, you can change that as much as you want. Since my American Diner is a family restaurant, I will call it our family. And I already made a text about our family or our employees. So I just go in here and paste it in. As in the image boxes before, I can change some of our employees. So I can change the images again, upload files, select a file. And this time I want to choose our first cook, which is the founder of this restaurant. Insert the media. I can change the text again. And also for the second one, I'm gonna speed that up now a little bit because it's getting boring otherwise. Awesome. Now we introduced some of our team, which can be really helpful in building a relationship with your customers. Okay, what else can we do? We can also edit the background here because we don't really sell cupcakes. So again, I can edit the section by clicking on add a column, go to the style and for the image, I exchange it. So upload file, select the file, 
And for example, here I want to show our restaurant, for example, my sitting area. So I open that. And then I can also insert the media. And yeah, this already looks good. I could also switch the columns. And like I said before, I'm just showing one template and one example right now. You could change anything you want. You can use different templates. You can even use a template that isn't even made for a restaurant and then just make it work for your restaurant. You just have to like it. I chose this because I liked it and it's quite easy to customize. All you really need is some text and some nice images, which you can easily produce. So basically you just have to make sure that you're happy with the outcome of your website. So you don't have to follow every step I'm doing here now. I'm just showing you more examples on how to edit templates and also blocks. Okay, so let's get back into the widgets and down here we have a gallery. This can also be really nice to show some of your menus or some of your food. So to edit that, just click in here. And now we are in the image gallery. And here on the left side, you can switch out the images. So click on here and then you can edit the gallery. For example, we could just delete all these pictures and select the files. This, then I click on command so I can mark more. And I also want to show this. And this, and maybe also this, and yeah, that looks good. Maybe also this and that, and a milkshake can never hurt. Okay, I guess that's good. Did I miss something? No, oh, okay, then I click on open. They are getting uploaded. You can also change the order. If you click on reverse order, or you can drag them around. You can give them captions, and then we can insert the gallery. Let me just switch that a little bit. Okay, insert gallery. And now it's inserting. I can also click on the X here. And this is our new gallery. We could also change the image size. Right now it's set to large. Make it medium large. Or large again. So if you click on it, it will have a different size. But I guess that looks all right already. Cool. Yeah, then let's click back on the widgets. What else do we have? Here we have our footer. So how to find us. We can leave that. You can change the text. You can change the address. To your address, simply click on it. You can change the icon, the address. Same goes for the phone and email. So this is the phone. This is the email. You can change that. And you can also change the working hours. So if you click on here, click on the icon once, it reappears. So right now you can see it. Let's click on it. Click on the clock again, insert. And now you can see it. That sometimes happens if you import templates, we can change the working hours. And if we want it, we could even add Google Maps. So I could choose Google Maps and drag it down here and type in our address. And then we would also have Google Maps. We could also change the background image here again. Simply click on it, go to style and change the background image. Okay, but I guess that already looks good. If you want it, you could also add in some more links down here. If you maybe want to add some more pages, you can just choose a text box, put it below it, and then, for example, make a bullet list and call this one data privacy, mark it, click on insert link, and then type in the URL, or you could also search for home, for example, and then it will link to the home page. Or if you have another page, just search for the title. You can then click on it and click on apply and you have a new link. Then you can enter and make a new one, for example, legal and do the same process again. Okay, let's update the page once. So now it's saved. And if we take a look at it, 
We can do that by clicking on the eye to see previews, or we could also just refresh our homepage. And this is what it looks like now. We have our beautiful hero image, our special offers. Like I said, it's really cool if you have like your cutout plates here. You can easily do that on Fiverr. And remember, the Fiverr tutorial comes later on. We have a beef sandwich, tomato burgers, light burritos, a link to the full menu, which we will create next. Then about a restaurant, we're waiting for you, get in touch, our family, and a little gallery. And if you click on it, you have like these big images. And now I'm actually getting really hungry, so yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that looks good. And also this down here, a map, we can scroll in there. Awesome. Yeah, I like it. We have a link, which leads to the homepage, but still it's a link. Yeah, so that's good. And now let's create the next page, which will be our menu. So to create a new page, let's get back into the Elementor tab. Make sure that you update everything to save it. Then we can exit it again by clicking on exit to dashboard. Oh, and by the way, this is actually a really good website. You will definitely stand out from all the restaurants in your town because almost no one has such a good website, especially made on their own and saving thousands of euros or dollars while making it. So awesome. Congratulations if you came that far. Let's get back on pages here on the left side. Click on add new. I titled this one menu, so I just type in menu. Then again, make sure to set the content layout to 100% full width. Go to header, display top bar is disable. Title is disable and footer, disable and disable. And then we can publish the page and publish it. And if I now click on add with Elementor, it's ready to go. Perfect. Now we just need a new template. So we can click on Envato Elements again. Here we can search in the templates again. You could also build a page by starting, for example, with a hero block, then going down and making maybe a sub hero. So one below it and inserting it. Then maybe a pricing table or whatever you want, but it's easier if you just choose a whole template. So let's go to templates and search for food and drink again. Scroll down. Here, Italian restaurant was the template kit we used before. We chose home two for the homepage and now let's see if we can find a good menu page. So here we have menu one or menu two or menu three, even the Ryan menu uh, or chef's page. Let's check out menu one first. Okay, it looks good. You have different sections, for example, pizza and pasta. That's quite cool. Let's see what menu two offers. Okay, this one isn't as separated. Yeah, I mean, it all just depends on what you like. You can also choose completely different template kits, for example, one of those, or even a completely different one. Doesn't even have to be a restaurant. I'm just going to choose um, menu one, I guess. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, I guess that's good. So I click on import template. Now it's importing. Great, I can click on X and refresh the page once. And then I can click on Add Template, My Templates. And here we have Menu 1. So I can click on Insert. Yes. I'm also going to close these tabs because we don't really need them for now. Okay. 
Great, now this loaded, but our header is missing again. So make sure to go to settings, page layout and choose default. And now it's back, if I scroll up, perfect. Let me update the page and go back to the widgets. Awesome. Now I don't want to waste your time because this is the same process as in the page we edited earlier. Just go in here, see what you want to change and then change it. You know how to change background images, image boxes, and also for example, the text in here, let's say we don't say spaghetti carbonara, so we can just change the text. You can click in here, change the price, change this text, and the same for everything. I'm just going to change one real quick. Let's say this is our hamburger. We can change the description. For example, it would be um, a really short description. Let's say we want to have it like that. And then we also create pages for each of our items. So let's say we will create a page for our hamburger, which will be the next step after this. So what we can also do is make this a link by marking it clicking on insert link and then filling in our domain. So let's create a website.com slash and in this case hamburger. Then we can click on apply and also do the same for the title. So here we can put a link Awesome, and when someone clicks on this, it will lead to the hamburger page. That's great. We can change the pricing, and we can do that for each of these items. We can change the pictures that separate all of the categories. And yeah, I guess by now you should know how to change all that. Okay, what else? So once we edited all that, I'm going to do that off camera because it takes long. We can also edit the footer. Let's say I don't like this footer. By the way, you, sometimes you can't see the icons immediately Then just click on them or click on them once more and on the icon, then they should appear. But let's say I don't like this footer. So I can also delete this section. And now I can show you how to use blocks. So to use a block, you can click on Envato Elements and go to Blocks. And here we could look for a footer. So let's scroll down. Here we have footers. These are only available in the pro version of Elementor. So let's skip those. But for example, this could look cool or this. I'm just gonna choose this one, for example. Then I can click on add block to page. And it's already inserted. If you wanted to, you could also choose another block and position it somewhere else. But since it's a footer, it's at the right position already. And then we can also just go in here and edit everything. Great. So that's how we create our menu. I didn't go into too much detail here, but by now you'll be definitely ready to build that on your own. Okay, let's get back to the widgets. Let me show you two more things we can use in Elementor. One is the ability to copy stuff. So for example, this widget, I can right click on it and I can say copy. And then I could, for example, in yeah, this, I could right click and paste the style. So then the style of the setting is pasted onto this widget. Doesn't really look too good, but that's just a quick shortcut. I'm gonna undo that. Okay, then it also scrolls down. Okay, what else can you do? You can also duplicate stuff. For example, I can right click on this and duplicate it. And now we have a twice. So that's perfect. If you just build something and it looks great for you, then you can just duplicate it and change the content. That will save you a lot of time. And another cool feature I wanted to show you, for example, in the footer. Let's say I changed something in here. Let's say I don't even need that column. So we only have 
these three columns and I want to keep it that way and use it for all of my pages. What I then can do is right click, click on save as template, give it a name, for example, footer, click on save. Now it's saving in my templates, great. Let me update the menu, we are done here. And in the next step, I'm going to create a page for our hamburger. And then I will also build in the footer. So let's do that. So I'll exit Elementor, go to pages and add new, call this one hamburger, content layout and all that stuff, you know by now, I skip ahead. Okay, publish, publish, add it with Elementor. And this time I go to templates again, search for Italian restaurant. Here we have it. And I want to choose the product page. So we have product page one or product page two. Yeah, let's just choose that, import the template. Now it's imported. I can refresh the page once. Go to add templates, my templates, and here we have product page one. I can insert it, yes. I can go to the settings real quick and choose default. Okay, great. So this is our hamburger page. So I'll call this hamburger. I can change the background style. Select the files real quick. This is just to show you what you can do with your website. So hamburger, okay, top center. Position should be custom and let's make the right position a little higher. Yeah, like that, looks great. Okay, here you could put another picture, make a long description, change the price put more little pictures and even related products. This is great. Maybe you can do like a small upsell, for example, a salad or some soft drinks in here. So this would be a salad. If you click on details, it will lead to the salad side. There you have a lot of opportunities. This is also just really quick to show you how you could edit this. This is just a quick page you can do for each product, but it's great. If someone sees your menu and then clicks on the product, they have like better and full description of the product and, and, and they can see if they like it. Awesome. We can also add the footer we just created. So if I click on the file icon and go to my templates, here we have the footer saved. So if I insert it, yes. We have the footer we just created. So that's also how you can use it on multiple pages and save some time. Great, then let's update the page once. I would obviously work completely on that, but by now you know how to use Elementor, so I don't wanna waste your time. By doing each step for every single site, you know how. Okay, then let's close that again, exit the dashboard. If we refresh the page, nothing really happens. But if I go, for example, to full menu, this is our menu page now. Just imagine it is for an American diner. And here we have a hamburger. If I click on it, it leads to our hamburger page. Oh yeah, I like that, but let's see. Maybe I want to eat something else, so I go back again. And this time, maybe on this. And you will just make links for each of those. They can then click on it and see what they want to eat. That's nice. In the next step, we also need our contact page. The get in touch button leads to contact, but we don't have a contact page yet. So let's create that page by going to pages and add new. I'll call this one contact since the button also leads to 
contact. By the way, in case you have a name that's made out of two words, for example, Coca-Cola, it would be Coca minus Cola. So you already know that when you make the links. Or you can also first create all the pages and then whenever you want to link to somewhere, you can already search for it very easier in here. Okay, this one will be contact. And I'll do the settings again. Publish, publish, add it with Elementor. Go to Envato Elements, search for Italian restaurant. Okay, and here we look for a contact page. Okay, there are two contact pages. Let's look at them. Okay, let's go back once and let's look at this one. Yeah, I like this more. Okay, let's import the template. And then click on X, refresh the page. Go to my templates. And here we have contact two, insert it, yes. Go to the settings again and choose default. Great, okay. So here again, we could change the background image. Maybe a picture of your restaurant from the inside or maybe from the outside. Let's see if I have anything. Let's go into layout and then into style. Choose image. Oh no, this won't fit. Blood files, maybe I have one. Yeah, that can fit. It's just not in a very good quality. But let's just leave it like that for now. Okay, here we could change the text to visit us. Could scroll down and then we can change the title. For example, Ernest Steiner in New York, I have no idea. Make a small description, your opening times. Maybe you could even add in your phone number in here. So if we, okay, ah, okay, this says two columns. So maybe if I click on here, choose text editor. Uh, let's put it above it, it's easier. Okay, so our phone number could be like that. I can center it in the styling. And also I can copy the style now. So I can right click, copy, right click, paste style. That's easier. We can also scroll down and edit the Google Maps. So I can just click on edit Google Maps here, change the address. I'm just gonna type in New York City, but you could also type in real addresses. Okay, awesome. What else? Um, this contact page is actually built if you have multiple restaurants. In my case, we only have one diner, but if you have multiple, you can also do that. I'm gonna delete these sections. And what we could also build in here is a form where people can book a table. So let's do that real quick. So I'll update the page, go back to WordPress, Then I go to plugins and add new. And here I can search for happy forms. I'll also show the name here. And then you can choose this one by the theme foundry. I actually searched for like booking plugin for restaurants specifically, but I did not find any that were really working plus were free. You can definitely Google for a WordPress restaurant booking plugin. Maybe if you are not hesitant to spend maybe, I don't know, $30 or $40, you can find a good plugin. I wanted to do it free now, but just search for it and you'll probably find some tutorials. We're going to work with that. So install now. 
and activate. Great, here I click on skip this step or continue here. And here we have our first form. Let's just click on that sample form and edit it. We can give it another title, for example, reservation. We can change the first field, which is first name. Maybe I like it if the display label, so this one is set to inside. So now it's inside the form. Can also do the same for the last name. If you don't want to require the first name, you can also uncheck this is required. But I want it required actually, so I'll leave it like that. Um, yeah, multiple choice, we don't need that, so I'll delete it. We also don't need what's your age, so I'll also delete it. Okay, then we have your message. This could be when do you need a table? Inside and required. And we can also add another part, so add a part and short text, for example. And this one is um, how many guests are coming. Label is also set to inside, no description. Awesome. In case you want to have anything else for your form, we, for example, also need an email address or a phone number, some way to contact them, so add part. And then email, this is required. You can also write a description, for example, um, this way we can contact you. But I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so we have an email address and maybe also a phone number. Who knows, that can definitely be helpful. But I would not make it required. Okay. So this is optional, perfect. Then we can go to setup. And here we have a success message. This will appear when the form is successfully sent out. Here we could, for example, write, thank you, your booking has been sent. You will soon know if the booking was accepted or denied. This is an error message in case there's any kind of error and the form can't even be sent. So this would say there's a problem, please review your submission, that should be all right. And the submit button label, it is what sends in here. So this is send, that should be all right. We could also change it to book, but that should be good. Okay, then we can go into email. These are the email settings. Receive submissions alert, yeah, I will keep that on. So the email address is where it gets sent to. I will leave it at that email, but you can change it. The email subject is, what well, is the subject of the email you receive? For example, booking via contact form. You can check that it sends a confirmation email. This will send an email to the email address that was in here. And this is the email address that it gets sent from and also where they can answer to. This is the name that is displayed. You can change it to, for example, Ernest Steiner. And here you can change the email subject and the content. For example, thank you, we received your booking. In a few minutes, we'll update you on if there are any tables available. Okay, but that should be good for now. And we can also go into the style of it. But that's not too much. I would maybe go into the title. You can say that it should not be shown, so hide. Yeah, that's good. Anything else, maybe general. But well, that's all right. You can change some of the colors here, but that should be good. If we update it then and click on the X, we can here see the short code. We can just copy that. Then we can go to pages or pages, I open that in a new tab. Here we have the contact page, so I can click on edit with Elementor. And now I can search for shortcode in the widgets. 
here we have it. I can drag it, for example, yeah, above the map, why not? And here I can fill in the shortcode, so I paste it in there. And here we have a form. So, first name, last name, when do you need a table, how many guests are coming, email address and phone number. Awesome. You can also edit that a little bit because it's maybe a little wide. So content should not be full width, but boxed. And then we can say how wide it should be. Maybe like that. Yeah, that looks better and is easier to read. Especially because this is also not so much spread out. Okay, then we can click in here. Yeah, that should be good. And whenever a booking is coming in, you can just reply to that email and say, yeah, we can accept it. Or no, we cannot accept that booking. That's quite simple, actually. Okay, so now we also have a contact page. All that's missing is our footer. So I go in here again, go to my templates. And here we have the footer section. So I insert it. Yes. Normally, we obviously customize it for us. But this is a way to have the same footer on every page. So that's good. So I'll update it. Great. Okay. If I take another look at my website, I now have a beautiful homepage and you know how to customize it for yourself and for your business. We have a cool gallery, we have a map here and all the important information already on the homepage. We have a full menu. If I click on this, you customize it for your stuff. But here, the customers can see all the food, which is really great. This looks really professional. And they can also click on the food and then have product pages. You just need to do it for every product. Here they even have upsets. You know how to edit all that. We have a footer. You can even go back and go back to the home page. We now also have a contact page, so get in touch. And here they can call us and they can send us an email. That's great. What else? Okay, there are only a few things missing now. The first is making sure that it looks good on your mobile phone. The second would be that we can also add the most important information. So your phone number in the very top with the top bar. And the third would be how to added the navigation because right now we can't access the other pages from the home page only via buttons but not via a menu so we will also add that let's start with the mobile responsiveness so how good it looks on the mobile phone let's go to the home page for example and click on edit with elementor and now we can also click on this responsive mode and choose mobile or tablet. Let's start with tablet. And here we can see how it would look like on a mobile phone. So that all looks all right. That looks all right. That looks all right. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. I can't complain about that. Let's see how it would look like on a mobile phone. So this for example, it doesn't look good because we can't really see the picture. Well, that's, this looks good. This is all right. Maybe some more spacing between it. This looks all right. This looks all right. This looks all right. But as you can see, it's not perfect on the mobile phone yet. So we can edit that. Since we use templates, it's now still pretty easy because most of it is mobilely optimized. If you would build your whole page from scratch, you will see that it's very harder because you will have to change a lot of stuff. But now it's not that hard. Okay, let's start with the most simple stuff. Let's say this is too big in my opinion. Let's just say that is the case. So I can click on it. And if I then go into the styling and typography, I would change it. But we want to change it only for the mobile phone. So here I have a little symbol next to size or basically next to every setting. 
you can see it here. This is a smartphone. If I click on it, I can choose whether I added the smartphone version, the tablet version, or the desktop version. If I added the mobile version, it will only do the changes to the mobile version. The desktop version stays the same. So let's choose mobile. And then we can make it bigger or smaller. For example, only one line. That's how you change it. You can also do the same for text or for images. It's all the same. If we go into the styling, here the spacing and the width can be changed for the mobile version. Just make sure that you always choose the mobile version. Okay, so what don't I like? I don't like that you can only see a white background here. Normally this would be an image. So I can click on add a column. And in this case we have multiple options. You could go into the style and see what kind of image it is or why it is there. And we could try to change the position and the size to make it fit. But in this case it doesn't even make a big difference. So what I would just do is go into advanced. And here under responsive, I can say hide on mobile and hide on tablet. Now I can still see it because it's just on my computer. But in real life, this would now be hidden. And after this, the special offer start. So this part won't even be seen on the mobile phone anymore. That's quite helpful if you ever have a section or a widget that you don't want to showcase on a mobile phone. Just hide it. Okay, but I think on the tablet it actually looked good, so I'll leave it. Okay, well that's going to be change. Here, the full menu is quite close to light burritos, so I can edit that. Go to advanced. For example, here I would work with the margin to have some more space between it. Make sure that it's set to mobile. I'll unlink the values, set it to percent. This is always a little easier. And give it maybe... 4% to the top. Yeah, that's it already. Okay, I like the rest. Get in touch. Yeah. Yeah, the rest looks good. Awesome. And we can update the page. And that's already how you can work with the mobile settings. There's some more stuff about it, but if you work with templates, they are already made by professional designers. So in most cases, everything's fixed and you don't have to do too much. Just check it out occasionally. And if there's something way too big, click on it. Make sure that the mobile setting is selected and make it smaller. Okay. Or even hide it if it doesn't work in any way. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that would be that part. Let's get back to the desktop settings. Scroll up. And what we want to do next is add a top bar and then we work on the menu. Okay, so I'll go back into the WordPress dashboard for that. Then we can go to pages and all pages. For example, I want to edit the home page once more. So I click on home. And this is also just an option that might be helpful for a restaurant, but you also don't need to do it. Uh, but you can go into header and actually enable the top bar again. I know we always disabled it and I would probably in most cases also leave it like that. But maybe sometimes it can be helpful. I'm going to display it now, but only for this page. You can just look what you want. So I'll update it once and you'll see in a few minutes what we're going to do with it. Just keep in mind that we did that step. You can also exit the dashboard here once because it's too much and open the page once. Like that, you can also see we have the top bar again. So in here, we want to have a navigation. To do that, we go to the dashboard. We hover over appearance and then click on menus. I give the menu a name, for example, main, because it's our main menu. And then I click on create menu. And here I can choose which pages I want to have in the menu. So I want to have the home page. To see that, I click on view all. Here I have the home page. I also want the contact page and the menu page. So I have these three. I can click on add to menu. 
and then I have them in here. I can change the order, for example, I first want home, then menu, then contact. And then, really important, choose main and click on save menu. And if I refresh this page once, you see we have a menu. We have home, menu and contact. We could also make a drop down. For example, contact should be a drop down point of menu. So if I drop it to the right and save the menu, refresh the page. If I hover over menu, I can click on contact. Okay, doesn't really make sense now. But for example, if you had the point menu, you could add your products, for example, a hamburger, a milkshake, whatever, to the menu like that and drop it here to the right, save the menu. And if someone wants to open the menu, they can also directly see the hamburger. Might be an option too. I'm gonna keep it simple now. We have a home page, the menu page and the contact page. So I'll delete that part again by clicking on it and remove. If you wanted to, you could also link some custom links, for example, a link to YouTube or whatever, give it a special name, add to menu, and then it will be in there too. Yeah, okay, that's the most important parts. Make sure that it's set to main, save the menu, and now we have a simple menu like that. Doesn't really look good, but that's what we're gonna work on now. So once you have your menu, you can hover over appearance and then click on customize. Make sure that everything is saved. I'm gonna save one more time. Okay, so appearance and customize. And here we can work on the navigation to make it look really good and fitting to our site. But first, let's go to top bar here on the left. And here in content, we can change the content. Right now it says place your content here. And here we could, for example, add the phone number of your restaurant. Maybe like that. You can also go back, general, you can enable the top bar or also disable it here. You can make it full width or not full width. We can say that it should be hidden on mobile or on tablet. We can change the style, so left content, right social, center content and social. Then it's in the center, I would probably choose that. You can change the color of it. You can even make it a link if you wanted to. This would be if you add an HTML code. But that's also just one option I wanted to show you. You can change the colors to make it stand out a little more. Who knows, maybe a bluish. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look really good, but it can be helpful if you want to have it in the top. I'll disable it again, but I just wanted to make sure that you also know about that. Okay, so this is disabled here and I go back once, click on publish to save it. Then I can go back into the page again, into the page settings. So I clicked on edit page here because then I directly go to home. Okay, now I landed on the home page, but you could also always go into the WordPress dashboard, all pages, go to home and then edit. And here I go back into the header and disable the top bar again. So disable and update once. Awesome, and then I can refresh the customizer here. And now the top bar is gone and we can get to editing the menu. So to edit the menu, we can go to header, general, and here we can change the style of the menu. Right now it's set to minimal. We could change it to transparent. Can look really cool, but you always gotta make sure that it also looks good on all the other pages. So right now it looks all right if we changed the style of the text a little bit, but you always have to remember that each side has a different hero section, so it might not look too good. You can also change it to full screen, for example. So if someone clicks on it, it will open 
I like that too. It's very minimalistic. You can also center it. Like that. Or make it a medium sized one. Or vertical. So it's always there. Or a custom one. I'm gonna stay with minimal. That's probably also what I would recommend. Or a full screen one. So minimal. We can change the height of it to make it bigger. Smaller. Let's just leave it at. Yeah. That should be alright. You can make it full width or not. I'm gonna stick with no. Header border button. You can't see it right now, but it's a small line below the header. If you unselect that, you won't see it, but in transparent, you can see it. So right now, there's no line. Now there is a line. Doesn't really matter in minimal, but just so you know, we can change the background color. For example, to a red tone. Yeah, that is about the color of that. Normally, I would now go into Elementor, copy the hex code of the buttons and that, and make sure that it's the same color. I'm just gonna stick with that. Okay, so that's the background color, and the rest should be alright in general. Then we can go to Logo. In case you have a logo for your restaurant, you can upload it here. So you can select the logo. I don't have a logo right now, that's why I'm just gonna choose this one. If you also need a logo for your restaurant, I would also recommend Fiverr.com. I'm gonna show you that at the very end of this video, because it's not the most important part. But let's just say you have a logo, you can upload it and select it here. You can crop it to look good and crop the image. And now we have a logo in here, which is way too big right now, but we can make it fit. Yeah, that could look all right. Uh, maybe a little less. Yeah, maybe like that. Should be all right. Then I can go back. In case you don't have a logo, don't worry. It will just be your site title. Okay, what else do we have? Here we have the menu. This is simply what the menu will look like. So position, left, center, or right. I'll leave it at right. Links effect, there's no effect right now. You can choose underline from left, for example, and then underline from the left, or any other effect. Let's just choose underline up. You can change the links effect color. So right now it's this grayish one we could Choose red, even though there's a red background, but then it will come up red. Okay, whatever you like. Um, maybe bluish. Yeah, that could look cool. Okay, so the main styling. Here we have the link color, which is this grayish right now. Maybe we want to choose right. The link hover color is this blue. You can also change that to black for example the link color of the current menu item so for example right now we're on the home page this should be right too but we could change it to blue so it's blue now whatever you like let's choose black okay we don't want a link background that looks weird and also not for hover or for the current menu item um yeah what else if we scroll further down we don't even need all that. And the search icon. Yeah, right here you can see a search icon. I would recommend to disable that because it doesn't work too good and it looks weird. So I would disable it and then it's gone too. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Then we can go back once. These are all just some settings you can play with. They literally do what they say. But if you just do the settings I just did here, it should be a good menu afterwards. Good, that's it for the normal menu right now. So let's go back once more. And then we can click on typography. And on main menu. Font family. We can change it to the font family of our 
Elementor settings. So I could change it here. If I just look into Elementor and see which font it was, I'm gonna leave it like that for now, but you know how. Okay. The font rate can make it more bold or less bold. You can change the font style to normal or italic. Let's choose normal. You can work on the text transformation, so capitalize everything, lowercase, uppercase. And let's leave uppercase maybe and also how big it should be. Maybe a little bigger, so 20. Yeah, 22 should be alright. It's easy to read. Yeah, I like that. Okay, anything else? Letter spacing for some more letter spacing. Oh, well, that should be good. Okay, so that's the main menu on the desktop. We also have to work on the main menu for the mobile version because it will look a lot different. So we can go to header again and then on mobile menu. And we should also enable the mobile version down here. And now we see what the menu looks like on the mobile version. Okay. Don't play with the height. If you want, you can even choose a logo that is just for the mobile version, but right now it looks good, so I won't change it. That's also all right. The mobile menu style, okay. Right now it's selected as sidebar, so if you click on it, the sidebar opens. You can also choose drop down. So if you now click on it, it's a drop down, or you can choose full screen, and then it will be a full screen. I'm just gonna choose, yeah, full screen is all right. Display menu text, right now it says menu. This can be a little confusing because people might think they will click on the menu. So I would uncheck that because it's navigation and not the menu of our restaurant. Okay. That's all right, that's all right. Mobile menu search, it's the same as for the normal menu. I would disable it so people can search for stuff. Okay, great. Now we have the background color, which is this grayish color. You could make it more transparent, less transparent. Let's leave it like that maybe. The links color is the same as in the normal navigation. Just change what you want to change. So the links color right now is this grayish. We could change it to red. Auto blue, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, let's just leave it at this blue, for example. The links hover color doesn't make too much sense because on the mobile phone you don't really hover over stuff; you just click on it. Um, but you can change it too if you want. Maybe a red. Uh, the links background color we don't want to change that. Drop down. No, that's all good. So now we also worked on the mobile version. But if you want, you can also choose another one and work on that. It's not that hard. Just see what it says on the left. Here's the category, for example, the mobile menu styling. Then you have the background color and all the colors. So just see what it says. And you then see what happens. Okay, if I click on X and publish. That's good. If I click back. And now I can even take another look on my website. Awesome. So here we have a logo, we have a home page, a menu, a contact. We can access from here. Can scroll down and have a great page. You can get menu. People even can open some of our food, for example, a hamburger. That looks awesome. And we have a contact page. Here they see our restaurant, our opening times, phone number, and they can even book a table from here. You just have to accept their booking by answering with another email, and they can even see your Google Maps, and you have your food on. That's great. You can click on the logo to get back. Awesome, that's almost it. 
the page looks great. Uh, one last thing I wanted to show you is if you go to zimvestits.net slash restaurant, it's also the second link in the video description. This is another article I made for you. Here I just linked some of my favorite videos. So in case you want to build a complete page with Elementor, maybe you can watch the first video and also the second video. If you want to learn a little bit more on how to mobilely optimize your website, you can watch the third video. This one is really great. They are all made from Elementor themselves. In case you want to try out Elementor Pro because you want to use some of those widgets, um, you can watch this video on how to install Elementor Pro and how to get it. And image editing. I made this tutorial. On here I just show how to use Fiverr.com. It's not a long tutorial, it's like 8 minutes, but it helps you in finding good freelancers and it shows how to use Fiverr.com. So in case you need some of your images edited for your homepage or you don't have a logo for your restaurant yet, I will check that out too. Yeah, that's basically it. If you followed these steps I showed in the tutorial, you know how to build pages with Elementor, how to customize everything. And all you now need to do is find templates for yourself, make good pictures, customize them in a way that you are happy with them, build a menu page, build pages for each of your items, a contact page and your navigation. And you're all said and done and you will have a better website than 90% of your competition and it costs you less than 100 euros, maybe with the images from Fiverr, it's maximum $150, so it's way cheaper than if you rent to any web designer. And you can easily do this maybe on a Saturday and Sunday, and you will have a beautiful page afterwards. Great. Yeah, that's it. In case you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. In case you don't like the video, leave a thumbs down and I learn from that. You can leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you need help or even if you just have some advice for me on how to make the videos better. I'm always open for that. So thanks for your input. Thanks for watching so far. It's been a journey. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day and have fun with your new website. Hi, my name is Tim and in this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a website for your restaurant. Let's begin.